Mm-hmm. Bark. Ding, ding. <gasps> bark, bark, bark. Woof, 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 bark, bark. How dare you? Welcome back to the... Bark, 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 bark. Why are you... Let a... me outside. <laughs> woof, woof, woof. Welcome back to the Jenna Julian Podcast. I'm a dog. That all started because of PUBG. This episode is brought to you by dogs everywhere. Wow. Your dog, my dog. His dog, her dog. This episode is brought to you by MeUndies. Which, by the way, shouts out MeUndies. Reposted the picture I posted of uh, my butt in my MeUndies. And now I can forever send it to Rome to piss her off. Because she hated it. Oh MeUndies, guys, the best underwear out there. Delivered right to your door. New designs each month. And special member pricing. Meaning if you sign up to be a member with MeUndies, you get better deals on their underwear. And they also have socks and bralettes. Right now, go to MeUndies. That's M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash Jenna Julian. Get 15% off your first pair. And free shipping. Also, 100% satisfaction guarantee. Check it out. Also, guys, uh, Quip, the toothbrush that you didn't know that you needed. It is a compact, ultra-slim, ultra-convenient electric toothbrush backed by a network of over 10,000 dental professionals. It looks like it was designed by Apple. It is super clean, uh, and it has guided pulses to give you the best brush that you can possibly get. Also, they send you refills of bristle tips uh, on a regular schedule, so you are always getting the best brush you can get. starts at just $25 right now, and when you go to GetQuip, that's G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash Jenna Julian, you get your first refill pack for free. Check it out and start brushing, y'all. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. By the way, that picture that we took in Pittsburgh, Julian's in the hotel room in his underwear. He goes, will you take a picture of me? I'm like, sure. Are you you like, you you just going to be in your underwear? He's like, yeah. And he turns around and he goes, and puts his butt out. (laughs) I took that picture. I didn't think you were going to post it. I didn't even know what you were like getting at. He gets so like Aries. You're just like, take a picture of my butt. And then he wouldn't stop airdropping it to Rome. Oh, what? Like you've never posted a picture of your butt? I'm not allowed to post a picture of my butt. You can do whatever you want, boy. I just no, I what didn't happened see was, it coming. I, what didn't, happened, I didn't know what was happening. What happened was we had just worked out. I was feeling nice. I was feeling myself. Was feeling we get myself. back to the room. Jenna goes, damn, your butt looks good. Can I take a picture? And I'm like, fine, what babe. Happened. Whatever you want. That is not what happened at all. Sort of what happened. No, it isn't. All right, fine. I asked her to take a picture of my butt. So I, I took the picture of my butt. And immediately after looking at it, I was like, these are probably my favorite pair of Mandy's. It's the one with the roses on them. So, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to post it and um, and give a little love to Mandy's. And I did. And um, Rome replied to my DM saying, <laughs> what did she say? Like, um, she's like, it makes me so uncomfortable. Said, it makes me so uncomfortable. So then I started airdropping the picture to her all trip. <laughs> because, well, that's what you do, right? Also... Weirdly, that was the picture because I tagged where we were at Pittsburgh. I, that was, no, 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 we're working, dog. <laughs> I don't know why you like we're, just. That was the picture that Dylan uh, saw, and we found out that we were both in the same city because of. So, me and these brought us and our friend Dylan together in a city that n- neither of us are from or had any idea the other person was in. <laughs> like, that was crazy. But yeah, anyway, me and is great. Thank you, me and And if you get me and you'll make new friends. And I don't think you can back up that claim, but that is not backed by the FDA. (laughs) But anyway, we just got back from Pittsburgh. Jenna did an appearance at Slippery Rock University. How was that? It was so fun. They were so hype. Like I, 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 it's so bizarre, right? Because we just like live and work here alone in the house all the time. (laughs) So then when you just like occasionally because it's not like frequent enough for you to ever get used to it right you just like you walk out into a room of all these people and they're like super fucking excited and you're like this feels so weird but like wow thank you for this warm welcome i don't know why i'm here or what y'all want me to do except talk about life i don't know what i was expecting in terms of like energy but i wasn't expecting it to be that crazy yeah well because for a small university yeah 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 you've well you've done so many of them by now every school every school is different some of them are like super academic and they have questions along those lines yeah edmonton was all they wanted to talk about was like mental health and like taking care of yourselves which is like beautiful and wonderful but you know different the university of arizona was like the most hype crowd i've ever fucking seen i would argue that Slippery Rock was more hype, honestly. 
The, well, the Arizona one that we did was like one of the first ones and people were just, it was just like shouting out from the crowd nonstop. Yeah. Like, come it definitely, to this bar and get a Harry Potter shot. I'm like, what's a Harry Potter shot? They're like, they light it on fire. And the whole crowd goes fucking nuts. I'm like, I don't know what's happening. You guys you, are You definitely felt like a big university <laughs> crowd. Like but a big party crowd. Slippery Rock was like Slippery that. Rock was hype as fuck. But and like it a, caught me by surprise. It was wild. They were wild. It, it was like they were, they basically, ex, they have this gym, right? Where the basketball court, volleyball court, and they have like the upstairs track that looks down on it. And they like opened up the door. So it's like they extended the gym, put 1,500 freaking foldable chairs on the gym floor. And when they were screaming, it was like definite. Yeah. It was like so loud. I like, it was so tight. Like, I shouts could not out, believe it. Shouts out to a, a person named Joey who showed up dressed up as a chair. Like, he had my face paint on to be yeah. a chair. Yeah. And I just looked out in the crowd, and I just see this chair staring back at me. It was probably one of my favorite moments of my life. It was, it was a really, really good... <laughs> it went real... You know, it was intense. It was a lot of fucking people, but it went really well. And you, really you did fun. great. So, like, that's a funny point that you said that I kind of wanted to talk about for a sec. What? Like, we are we are in our house 99% of the time yeah. doing our work filming the podcast, filming videos, streaming on Twitch, in in which all of these scenarios involve no human standing there and watching us. Yeah, it's just us. Or clapping or giving, you know, live feedback. And then you go into a room like that. Yeah. Like, that's, I mean, I was there with you, so I know what it's like, but can you, like, put into words what yeah, that so switch is? Like, you know, these people know every little thing, but you never see them. Well, yeah, I mean, for most people that do that kind of stuff, it's like you're on tour or something where you like you get used to being on stage. Yeah, yeah. Totally. But, like I don't do any sort of like live performances really, so it's just like uh, occasionally a few times a year you're just in a room with a ton of people and they're like, "Be good at public speaking," and you're like, "I'm literally alone all the time. Like this is a lot." But like that crowd when I when I walked out there, like just like the energy and like the love that you get from people like that, like it makes you want to cry. Like I instantly felt like I wanted to cry. You know what I mean? If I wasn't trying to like keep it together and like make it up the stairs without falling down, like that's the kind of thing that like I would just sob at. Mm. I mean, it's intense, but yeah, it is. It all it all is very positive for you. Like that's a specific thing for when you do these things. That's yeah, wild. And it's so funny because you'll be like. Hell yeah. And then Hell they just yeah. lose their fucking minds. And yeah. you're just like, oh my God, this is crazy, dude. <laughs> All right. Because it's much different than like reading a Twitter mention or like reading Twitch chat or yeah. like reading YouTube comments. It's just like so visceral and there. True. It also just like it blows my mind. Like, first of all, that schools are open to having like non-traditional people there. You know, like they yeah. said Josh Peck was there, although he's an actor, you know, like. No, but he's also internet now. Like, exactly. You know. But like the fact that schools invite me, I'm like, that's that's pretty cool, you know, and progressive of them to not be boxed into like having some type of academic speaker there or someone. I don't know. It, it just seems rad. Um but yeah, it, it blows my mind a little bit. But I, I also realized that my school had nobody fucking cool ever come. You to didn't my have not, nobody. Like, you're sure. You just might I'm not have missed it. Absolutely sure. We did. It wasn't a thing. We. I went to one like my freshman year, and she was like an author, but a really small one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that was so it. So no, like celebrities, nothing like that. No, and we didn't have like musical events with like you know you go to these schools that have like these big like festivals for their students essentially with like mm. you know a couple people like playing and you're like that's yeah. so cool yeah. like well in the New England area there were like massive schools that would have like these big things put on by their big budgets and their you know student government yeah and they yeah. have like like really cool people come and i'm like yeah we don't, we don't give fucking anybody yeah yeah we had uh well so chapman i think in my like last two years of chapman there were more of like the music events where they had like djs or yeah. whoever come and like fill the gym and i never i think i went to one of those once and i hated it just because it's like wasn't my scene but um but the only speaker i can remember and i went to it was rain wilson which was really See, but rad. that's really cool yeah, no, that was really rad. Um, but I mean, I agree with you. Like, I agree that it's it's cool that they're inviting internet people now as yeah as the Rain Wilsons, like as the celebrities to the school because like sometimes at your university appearances they'll allow uh, one of the student government representatives, a student, basically interview yeah. you or moderate. And I love when they do that because it feels like 
just a, like your peers almost, right. right? Like you're talking to someone who, who understands everything. And this recent one, there was a, a faculty member doing the interviewing. And that was fine. She was great. But at the same time, you could see on her face when you would say something and people would lose it that she was like, what I don't the know hell what's is going on. What's happening. Yeah, <laughs> this is crazy. Like I did my research, but I couldn't prepare yeah, for that. What the hell is going on? Yeah, so. I ju- yeah, I, I just think it's really cool that like the schools that have budget for that kind of thing is clearly mine didn't or like just, that, I don't know what the fuck happened. But we didn't get anything <laughs> cool. But, you know, they give these <clears throat> students a budget and it's the student governments that reach out to like book people that they want to see or that they think that the student body would want to <clears throat> see. So I think yeah. that that's cool that the schools give the students the liberty of picking their own guests and doing that kind of thing yeah and that sort of like will answer the questions that would normally flood the comments like this like come to my school well that's how it happens right like that's how it started yeah like basically like my youtube friends be like how did you get started doing that i'm like it was just like one student government that was like we want to book you is this something you do and i was like yeah i don't have a live show but like we could do a Q&A, you can make it whatever you want. Like you can have a student do it. We can do like open questions and answers. Like it's your time, it's your school. Like whatever your school wants me to do, like let's just do it, let's have fun. Yeah. And then it was like Snowball. contagious. Yeah. Cause then people were like, well now my school wants mm-hmm. you to come. Which is the coolest way to do it because it took one, I guess, forward thinking student government. I think U of A was the first one, right? I think so. To put that out and, and to give convince you a formal proposal yeah. and offer a fee and fly you out like the whole thing. Right. And then you do it once and it looks legit and it is legit. And so all these other schools, I can't even count on. It's hard to think about all the ones we've done. Yeah, it's a lot. Because like I, there's so many of them. Yeah. You've done for you've been doing them for like four years. I don't even know. Yeah. I but have, like if you're in a student government and I don't know how that stuff works because I've never been in a college like student government. Yeah, but like if I. there's a YouTuber or a person or something that you think your school would like, like if it's fucking Shane Dawson or like he, that man's outrageously busy at this point. But mm. like there's no harm in just like reaching out mm-hmm. and because that's how it happened to me. You know, like even asking questions like what would it take? How does this work? Like, right. you know, we'd love to formally invite you. Can you give us some information of what it, what, yeah. ha- what happens? You know what I mean? But it. It's not like, you know, hey, my name's Jessica and I'm I'm reaching out to you and I really like you and want you to come. It was like they, they gave us a no, formal they, proposal. They did it, yeah, they did it the right way, which is dope. Anyway, that was our weekend. It was like a pretty quick turnaround, fly in, fly out. But you did awesome. It was really cool to see in person. It's just wild. It's wild to like be alone all the time and then all of a sudden you're just like on a stage. Right. Like, oh, shit. What the hell is going on? And Slippery Rock was like a really beautiful school. We yeah. got to see like a little bit of the facilities. And mm-hmm. It's really nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had friends that went to Slippery Rock. Yeah. Like there's a lot of, you know, people in upstate New York that go to SUNY schools or then they go to like parts of New England or they go to Pennsylvania. There's a lot of schools in Pennsylvania. Yeah. And it's not far. So it's like four hours from where I grew up. So you could just drive home. Hmm. It's closer than Boston. Like I, I drove six hours. I know that kind of blew my mind when you were like, we're closer to Rochester than, I, than we would be in Boston. Mm-hmm. I like didn't realize that. Yeah. Anyway, don't even get me started on how excited I am to play Don't Even Get Me Started Part 2. This is like a, we did this a long time ago. Yeah, this but has people been People always ask us to keep doing it. But we you have to like wait an, enough time to like come up with things that you could even say. So this game, for those who don't know, is a ranting game where we compile the list of things that we could rant about. And we're each going to pull, we're going to take turns pulling um, these things from the cup. And then we're going to start our rant by saying, <laughs> don't even get me started about this subject. And you have to argue whatever's in there. Even if you don't fully believe it, yeah. you have to argue. Because there's a couple that Jenna like came up with and there's a couple that I came up with. So like she might get mine yeah. and I might get hers. Um, so we're just going to like rant a little bit for you. And um, there you go. So enjoy the ranting. You want to go first? Or do you want me to go? I see that you didn't fold any of these. So I can see where well, it's... I would, babe, it's not, it's not Virgo season anymore. It's Libra oh. season. So. Oh. All right. I have... Don't, oh, yeah, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, don't even get me started. 
on why soup is the perfect oh, food. So glad I didn't get that one. It is so perfect. It is perfect in any weather. I don't care if it's hot out. It's the perfect <clears throat> meal. It's like, it, <clears throat> because there's enough liquid in there, it's like satiating and hot. Even if it's cold, if you're eating like a gazpacho, it's like just the perfect meal. Like there's a reason why when you're sick, you want some soup because mm-hmm. it's nourishing, delicious, salty. I swear on my life that if you're hungover, the best hangover meal is soup because it's not so solid enough to like make you feel sick and queasy but there's enough sodium in there to get you back on your feet and make mm-hmm. you feel good you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. it's portable you could put it in a thermos boy like what <laughs> the hell you could drink it or you can eat it mm-hmm. for someone that likes orange juice with pulp and we've had this conversation in nauseam about how it's kind of gross a little bit to drink something with solid chunks in it soup is that but it is a food and it's delicious you should agree with me and people who have like jaw or teeth problems or injuries can still eat soup old people can eat it babies can eat it people of all ages can eat it (laughs) it's the perfect food it any kind of food that you like can be made into a soup and it is delicious tortilla soup bitch who invented that (laughs) chili is fantastic although i don't think that's a soup that's more of like a stew but honestly stews i'm here for them as well i grew up on beef stew it is fucking amazing you put it in a pot you simmer it it's easy to cook It's cheap to cook. Mm -hmm. You can throw anything in it and it's delicious. Mm -hmm. All right. I shouldn't have gotten you started. Don't even get me started. All right. I don't like when people would make fun of me in the middle of summer when I would order a soup because fuck you, this is delicious and I'm going to fucking eat it. Okay. Do you agree with me? I now agree with you. Do you agree with well, me? Well, no, I don't think soup is the perfect food. <gasps> but I, I Then what's the perfect food? Probably pizza or um, pad thai, probably. Do they have pad thai soup? Can you put pad thai in soup? Yeah. Then it's put like... Put some rice noodles in some soup? Okay. You sold me a few... It, so it'll be like, like a hot and sour soup. It's like ramen with like different noodles. Ramen. Is ramen a soup? I don't know. Ramen's a soup. So is pho. Pho is definitely a soup, well, if but it's not different soup, than ramen. Yeah, then yeah. yeah, they're soups. All right, so th- use that argument, and then you win me over. If ramen is in that category, I, I'm, I'll eat ramen. I think ramen might be a soup. Ramen is a soup. Ramen might be a soup. What? In what scenario is it not a soup? Well, I mean, I feel like this is a debate. Like, you could debate this. If it's a noodle dish... But the the basis of what makes it special is the broth, then it should be considered a soup. Well, because if you take away the liquid from ramen, it's not ramen anymore. But there's still ramen noodles. Yeah, that's part of the soup. It's an but ingredient. But ramen noodles is different than ramen. Yeah. Well, I'm what not makes about ramen ramen, ramen is the broth, mm-hmm. which take means away it's the broth. a soup. Take away the broth, it's just ramen noodles. Mm-hmm. But I want ramen, so that's a soup. Mm, I right. think so. All right. Good job. Good first rant. Are you-, you, you didn't even offer me anything. Well, I'm, I think you just kind of, like, I'm not supposed to like vehemently oppose. I'm just trying to like maybe poke a hole or two and let you rant. It's the perfect food. Well, how is, how, okay. Why is it better than pizza? How about that? How can you have cheesy soup? I want cheesy soup. What are you talking about? Cheesy soup? What pizza about, like, is good because of the French cheese. French onion soup or like stuff with cheese in it. I've never had that in my life. They make like bacon cheeseburger soup. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit folded so quickly <laughs> you got nothing you can make anything with cheese in it with soup like you just throw cheese in it okay. you want chicken noodle and cheese soup Boil throw some, some water, cheese throw in some it cheese in it, and then you got yeah soup. minestrone soup with like a little gloop of cheese in there is so amazing gloop yeah gloop what about tomato soup with grilled cheese oof what do you mean oof, oof? I don't understand why people need to have tomato soup when they have grilled cheese you already have I'm going to get shit on for this because I know how many people love tomato soup with their grilled cheese. But for me, I'm just going to double up on grilled cheese. If you're going to get a side order, uh, get me a grilled cheese with a side order or grilled cheese. I don't need a side of soup to go with it. I want more of the grilled cheese. I don't need to dip it in anything. It tastes no, it, perfect. It the balances flavors are perfect. it out because My there's acidity in the tomato it. and it balances out I don't your believe, cheese and I don't, bread. I don't believe in that. Why do you think people make grilled or a grilled cheese sandwich with tomato slices on it? Don't believe any of that. Because it balances it out a little bit. I don't believe in balancing acidity or anything in food. I like to put but fucking fuck like tons it. of lime on everything. Don't that's balance. balancing it with acidity. No, no, like... No, like like you hate when I cook and I don't add like sugar to something because you're like, it needs balance. And I'm like, no, just more lime, 
more salt. It's so gross. Don't do that. <laughs> I hate that. No, no, I'm not. I'm, we'll be making, I'm not like, in the business of balancing food. I'm just not. We'll be making like a dressing in the blender. And I'm like, oh, how, like taste this. How do you think it tastes? He's more like, lemon. What do you, it could use some lemon. I'm like, yeah. there's literally no lemon in this in this dressing. It's like it's Caesar not, salad, oh. Caesar dressing. Like she doesn't like putting lemon in it. And I'm like, it, like Are you hurts kidding? your tongue. If oh. you taste things the way that Julian likes them, it like literally hurts your tongue. It and he's like, I think it needs it more lemon. It slaps your tongue on the ass. And your tongue's like, oh, all right. That's what happens when you put Soup lemon in Soup is the perfect dressing. food. Okay. It fills I, you up. You know what? I don't fully agree, but it I will, I will your soul. accept that statement from you. I don't think I can ever fully agree with that statement. Sorry. Well, you're wrong. Okay. Eight you're out of ten. Dead wrong. <clears throat> oh, don't even get me started on how many times I ran the mile growing up <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> All of those cold mornings at PE when I had A period and we had to jump on that stupid track and run the mile just so some out of shape PE instructor could stand there with his stopwatch and judge your mile time over and over. And you worked hard. You were basically an Olympic athlete. I ran a six, I ran a sub six minute mile in elementary school. My best was six. I I ran like a 545 in like fifth grade, dude. And I was... Dude, I was busting ass. I was I was training. I was thinking about it before school. I was thinking about it after school. I couldn't I could not stop thinking about how important this stupid mile was. And then what? It's like cursive writing. It doesn't even fucking apply in real life. Am I gonna be a track star? One percent chance. There was one guy who I like competed with in elementary school to be a better mile runner, and he fucking whooped my ass and he ended up being a track like guy in high school. And that's great. But for the rest of us. Imagine all of the shit we could have been getting done instead of running around that stupid, cold, dirty track in the morning. I mean, you're not wrong. It seems like, okay. Run a lap, get warmed up. You don't need to run a freaking mile. You don't need to have it be part of your test. You don't need to be worried about times. You don't need to be gassing yourself out. You don't need to be sweaty for the rest of the day. It's not like you had a locker room in elementary school. You were just sweaty. (laughs) I feel like you could do it like once a year as like a measurement, like a physical fitness test, right? Like you do it once, but like... You don't need to do it more than once. I do think that there is some validity in that it can measure your level of physical fitness. But as so a child. many times, I can't even tell you. We ran it so Why? many times. It sounds up. like you just had a really lazy gym teacher that was like. I had a lot of lazy gym teachers. Really? Yeah. So like in middle school, right? Sixth and seventh grade were shit. Eighth grade, you got to play football, basketball, soccer. You got to play the real sports. Sixth and seventh grade was like hacky sack. Uh, dance class, uh, juggling, we did square dancing, some really dumb shit. Square I don't dancing understand. was the biggest unit. It was the weirdest curriculum, like d- disparity between sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. But one thing that remained is all three grades had to run the fucking mile <laughs> over and over and over. Oh, you're doing juggling course for three months? Okay, we'll run the mile <laughs> so you can get better at throwing balls in the air and catching them. Oh my God, why is the mile so important? Why not a kilometer? Why not a, (laughs) like, why a mile? Why not like a hundred meter dash? Yeah. Like I would have been such a better athlete. I would have been drafted out of high school if we practiced the hundred meter dash and not the mile. Why would I ever need to run a mile? In what sport do you run a mile except the sport where you're literally running for sport? Not everyone wants to be a track star. Soccer. Hundred meter dash. All day, dude. All day. They don't need endurance. No, no, no. You can, if you're going to go to soccer practice and get endurance, but like for PE, <laughs> run the fucking hundred meter dash. Okay. I could have had such a better 60 meter dash time and I would have been scouted and drafted immediately if I had been practicing that. But what's a gym teacher going to do to kill like 10 minutes, 20 minutes while they wait for that one little asshole kid to be like, I'm not doing this. I'm going to walk the mile. So many people who were that kid in middle school. And I, I was never the kid, but I, I identified with the people who did that. Were like, yeah, I'm not like, running Fuck the fucking you. mile. I'm not doing it. Here's and I'm not note. changing for gym Here's class. Here's a note from my doctor or my mom who says I'm unfit to run the mile today, so eat it, PE teacher. I identify with that person. I was never that person, but I get it. Yeah. So much... Okay, 
the amount of people who did that would have been chopped in half if it was a 100 meter dash and not the mile. Because all you got to run is one stretch of the, the track and you're done. But like, I feel like your gym, your gym teacher was trying to kill time or like they had nothing to do that day. So they're like, all right, kids, we're running a mile it, today. A hundred percent is that. Because it eats up the whole period. 100%. By the time you walk to the especially track, you the get kids, everybody outside, as, you get them to all stretch a little bit. And especially the kids who, who walk that shit. Yeah. And it took 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And they're like, okay. That's my mind. Well, because you finish yours in six minutes. So then you sit there on the track for 15 minutes. And, and so that's your gym teacher. And that's another thing. Because they're I waiting work, for everyone I else to finish. I worked my ass off. I was trying to do my best at the mile because I'm like, this matters. We're doing this. I have to do well at it. I run it in six minutes. <laughs> and then I'm like huffing and puffing, breathing, chilling. And then all these people are walking their way past the finish line. And I'm like, okay, if that person got an A and I got an A, what the fuck did I just spend my energy on? <laughs> I don't disagree with you that we, it does seem a little unbalanced that you have kids run a mile, but you don't have them work on their sprints at all. You know? Don't even get me started. You do do that. We did the shuttle thing where you just, you drop the little shuttles. The baton thing? No, shuttles. What's the shuttles? You just run back and forth between those the lines. Those are suicides. Suicides. Yeah, but we, we call them shuttles. Those, are, like little... those are gnarly. Those at least make you a better athlete. True. I don't think the mile makes you a better athlete unless you're your sport wow. is long distance running. Oh God, the mile. I'm sorry, Julian. That was like the main source of my anxiety growing up is the mile. I was fine with the mile. I feel like we didn't I do was, it as much as you did But like, did it. I, I wasn't fine with it because I needed to be good at it. And so it caused anxiety because I was like, <laughs> I have to do well. The mile's tomorrow. I'm sorry. It's okay. Don't even get me started. You got me started. <laughs> Just rip off that it. piece of paper. No, Do you want me to pick another miles. one so you can stop thinking about it? Too <laughs> yeah. All right. I have. <laughs> Don't even get me started on why does Pittsburgh put French fries <laughs> in their fucking salads? Oh, shit. This is something we didn't know until we went to Pittsburgh this past weekend. Dylan told us about it. He, ordered a, he ordered a salad and it came with french fries and all the salads come with french fries it's a pittsburgh like salad in the salad with like ranch and cheese that's not a salad <laughs> it's <laughs> like fries with lettuce right it's it's cheese and ranch and lettuce fries yeah if you say i'll have a pittsburgh salad hold the lettuce you just got cheese fries you just got poutine <laughs> with ranch weird poutine weird poutine with ranch, <laughs> with ranch. yeah that's not a salad yeah if it if it is, you can't call it a Pittsburgh salad. You have to call it a French fry salad. Well, they call people, it a Pittsburgh salad. Because people from outside of Pittsburgh think that you're just getting like some a sort local of delicacy, a local salad. <laughs> oh, maybe there's an apple or something in it. I don't know. No, 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 no. It's nah. French fries. Mm -hmm. It's something I wasn't aware of. I also didn't know that people put French fries in a salad, mm -mm. and then have the gall to call it a salad. Who, the absolute, who you fucking fooling, Pittsburgh? Y'all aren't eat. Oh, I had a salad for lunch. Oh, yeah? What was in your salad? French fries, ranch, cheese. That's not a salad. You can't call it that. Mm. Also, maybe since we're on that topic and we were on the topic of soup and mm -hmm. what makes a soup mm -hmm. a soup, what makes a salad a salad? I think the primary ingredient is a leaf. Well, what about potato salad or macaroni salad? Then you're just subbing the leaf out with another word. It's like potato salad instead of actual salad. So I think, I don't. I think salad, as a classification of food, doesn't really encompass like the potato or the mac salads because those are just like those are um, those are lies. Alternative versions. No, of those that. those are lies that people made up. <laughs> they're, they're lies. <laughs> they're lies with carbs is what they are. And that and the Pittsburgh salad is even a bigger lie because it doesn't have a precursor to the the word salad. It's just a Pittsburgh salad, and it's not a salad. It's got fucking potatoes. It is a lie because at least if you're making macaroni salad, you're like, I know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm eating pasta. Yeah, because the Pittsburgh first word salad, in the dish is macaroni. Right. A Pittsburgh salad is like, I'm having a salad for lunch. Jesus. A salad is whatever you throw in it. Jesus. It's like when they made pizza, uh, pizza a vegetable. Remember that? No. Who made pizza a vegetable? You don't remember when they classified pizza as a vegetable for Who like a that? month? I don't Who know. That? I don't know. The Twitter? FDA. No, no, no. I don't know. It was like some thing. I don't actually know that the pizza is a bread. No, they, they made pizza a vegetable. <laughs> they did it. It was a vegetable mm. for a hot minute. Okay. But if pizza is a vegetable, then a Pittsburgh salad is a real salad. Mm. 
which neither of them fucking are. I don't disagree with you that I feel like a salad should be defined as like some type of vegetable is the base. Mm -hmm. But but anything beyond that, y'all are lying in well, that it's a salad. So like we gave you, the, uh, we're the salad board, okay? We're uh, we're like uh, we're is defining fruit, is what a fruit salad, salad a salad. We're defining what salads are, okay? We gave you croutons. You can have pieces of carb bread in in your mix of lettuce, and that'll be part of it. We'll allow that much because we want to popularize this thing. Mm -hmm. And you're going to throw that in our face and put French fries on it? No, absolutely not. And cheese? You can't just do that. That's what about a salad in a bread bowl? Is that a lie too? There's no such thing as a salad in a bread bowl. There's only soup in a bread bowl. A salad in a bread bowl? <laughs> With fries on it. Oh, my God. What about There's no order anymore. What about a pizza with a salad on top of it? Is it a pizza or a salad? It's a pizza salad. <laughs> a salad pizza. It's stupid is what it is. It's a waste of time and ingredients and money probably. Get a fresh vegetable pizza mm -hmm. or don't get a pizza. <laughs> get a salad. You can't just do both. I feel like a salad should be considered something that's like, you know, lettuce is the base or something, you know, that's it. The leaf, rest of it, leaf. the rest of what y'all be calling salads, like pasta salad or mac salad or potato. Yeah. If there's a, if there's another food group in front of the just word made salad, a, it's just not made a salad. Y'all just made a dish. Yeah, you made a it's dish. It's a dish with the word salad in it. You can borrow the word salad, but it's not a salad but I think what they're trying to define as a salad by calling something like a potato salad a salad is that you chopped something and threw it into a, into bowl, a bowl with a dressing yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's fine. That's like I said, that's a second classification. No, of salad. that's a dish. No, no, no. That's it, it's it's like a it's a it's a, a version of a salad, but it's not a salad. I I'm don't not, think. Yeah, I don't think just because you chop something and put it in a bowl with a dressing on it, it doesn't it make be it a salad. salad. No, but it's a type of like it's an alternate version of. No, a salad. I think it's a lie. Okay. All, all I'm saying is just because you said Pittsburgh before the word salad, don't make it a fucking salad. I agree. <laughs> the fuck? I, I feel like Pittsburgh as a whole needs to be more descriptive about what's in a Pittsburgh salad. <laughs> and not just write Pittsburgh salad. So when you get it, there's just loaded with fries. Mm -hmm. All right. Well done. Your turn. Don't even get me started. On how expensive the traditional electric toothbrush is, dude. Don't even get me That's started. Not what you that should get Quip. Julian. Quip is way more that affordable and the better toothbrush for you <laughs> and your brushing habits. Right now, guys, if you go to get Quip, that's G E T Q U I P dot com slash Jenna Julian. Quip starts at just twenty five dollars, and with that URL, you get your first refill pack for free. What is a refill pack? You ask. Well, it's a new, brand new bristle head for your toothbrush that gets replaced on a regular schedule, so you're not using and wearing down the same bristles over and over for months and months and months. No, they're sending you new ones, and the first pack of refill. Bristles for you will be on the house because you use our URL and you are a wonderful person. Right now, guys, what is Quip? Well, it's a newer, more modern, more affordable, and just as functional electric toothbrush that is super sleek, super clean looking, travel friendly, and great for your teeth. It has guided pulses to help you get the best brush it is backed by thousands of dental professionals, and it doesn't come with the high price tag, which is the best part. Don't even get me started on how good Quip is. They send you refill you packs. That. What did I do? <laughs> Don't swallow into the mic like Guys, that. Guys, it is it is super <laughs> low profile. It looks great on your on your um your um your bathroom counter or in your dop kit when you travel. It's super nice. It's great and it does the job. Check it out. Get quip.com slash Jen and Julian. Just twenty five dollars to start, guys. Come on. Think about it. Also, guys, me undies, my favorite fucking people on the internet i love me undies i love the people behind me undies i love the designs they create me undies is three times softer than cotton they have perfected the formula of good looking and good feeling underwear that come shipped to your door you don't have to go shopping in a mall for underwear who wants to fucking do that i don't want to do that they work with amazing people like the, the MeUndies family extends so far on the internet, and it's really wonderful. Uh, and, like, once you think you have your favorite design of MeUndies, they come out with a cooler design next month. Um, they literally work with really, really awesome and 
like established artists to create cool prints on their underwear. They have bralettes. They have socks. They even have like pajama pants that I love. Oh, those are the best. They have sponsored and supported us for many, many years. And they are wonderful guys. Check it out by going to MeUndies. That's M-E-U-N-D-I-E-S dot com slash Jenna Julian. Get 15% off your first pair, free shipping. And if you don't like it, you get 100% satisfaction guarantee, which I don't think you'll need to worry about at all because you're going to love it. Check it out. MeUndies. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. What does that say, Julian? What does that actually say? Don't even get me started. Uh huh. Don't even get me started. Oh. On waiters who insist on taking your order by memory and then messing it up. <laughs> what are you trying to prove? What are you trying to prove? Okay, I get it. You want to come off as the slick waiter who knows the menu really well, who wants to be personable and have a fun conversation. I don't need no notepad, dude. I got this right here, okay? I trust this notepad points to head. Take, take your order. Oh, we have a table full of 12 people, all who have really specific orders and some have dietary restrictions. No problem. I'm just going to butcher it all back in the kitchen and then bring you some other shit and then ruin everyone's night. Now, listen, I'm not in any way, shape, or form <laughs> coming down on waiters who want to be good entertainers or personable because I've seen it done right. But it takes a long time to get to that point of being able to be the waiter who's like, all right, what do you guys want? Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. Mm-hmm. Okay, you. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And repeats it back in perfect unison and then bounces, comes back with all the food. I've seen that and I know how magical it is. But if you haven't gotten there yet, don't just fake it till you make it because it's going to make all of us suffer. And when we're all hungry and we get the wrong food, I'm not going to be happy and I'm not going to really care about your charm anymore because I'm not getting the calories that this needs to run, this this train. Also, how hard would it have been to maybe just like take a couple notes? You don't need to write every single order down. But hey, if the guy with the curly hair is getting a weird salad, like a Pittsburgh salad, just write that down. Just like a little note to help you. Okay? Curly hair, Pittsburgh salad. Fine, done. That way you don't mess that up. But the rest of it, you got. Don't come. Don't come at me with this memory sham of you pretending to know what we want and then throwing it back in our face with the wrong food. I don't appreciate it. I'm hungry. Anytime you're dealing with someone who's hungry, you have to. You're pleasing them at all costs, right? Okay. It's the same when 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 you order food and it takes three hours to get there. Like, I could have done a three-hour meal at home. <laughs> <laughs> like that's my city. I'm good at that. I came to you because you're quicker than that, and you make it faster and I and more convenient. I could have done a three-hour meal at home. I don't. I I, I could have had. I could have had my wife ignore what I wanted to eat at home, <laughs> not you. Okay, I, I need you to listen to me. That's why I came to your establishment, sir. Please don't ignore me. <laughs> Julian. Don't even get me started on how much my wife ignores me. <laughs> Good. Give me two Pittsburgh salads and write it down. (laughs) Julian, (laughs) can I tell you a story? Yeah. So when I drove across the country, I stopped in Montana and was there with some friends, and we were there for a couple days. We went to this. It was in the middle of Montana, like Mm -hmm. fishtail, like very small. So we like drove twenty minutes, half an hour to a restaurant, and it was like the only one around. And they served like very specific and different types of like elk and moose. And I was eating meat at that point. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we were at a table with like eight, nine, ten people. I don't know. A bunch of people. And there's all these modifications. Everything's super specific. And our waiter's like really friendly, really nice. But we're going around the table and every like everything that you're ordering has like you know a sauce a rub a A side a side Mm -hmm. you know a different side a drink and he's doing them all at once and so each person like as you're saying what you'd like to eat is taking you know a couple minutes each Mm -hmm. we're going around the table and we're doing this and he's just standing there going "Uh uh-huh okay got it and we're all just like a little like is is he gonna eventually pull out a piece of paper to write something down like it's a teeny tiny restaurant and like there's only groups of like two everywhere else around us and i'm just like okay and i'm i'm like i i know you're ranting to rant but like also like i respect these people for sure that work in the service industry i also if you're if you're the type of waiter to to do that i'm not gonna doubt your expertise Mm -hmm. i think maybe something might go wrong but like also i admire you and you hustle right now totally 
we're going all around and I'm just silently like a little bit amazed because I would have checked out 20 minutes into this fucking order. I would have yeah. been like, yeah, sure. Totally. Sir, whatever the fuck I felt yeah, like. Yeah. He walks away after everyone gives their order and all the guys at the table start laughing because they're like, I'm just going to, I'm probably going to get like a, a ketchup popsicle. Like there's n- absolutely no fucking way that he remembered. And they're all like laughing and joking, like not to be mean or anything, but just yeah. like, there's just no way. Yeah. So because it's such a small restaurant, this boy, and he's like, I don't know, in his early 20s, like beautiful young man, like lovely, lively, amazing, like like the, the perfect waiter, yeah. like can't wait to serve you and have a good time. He comes back over and he was like, I, I forget how he said it, but it was so politely backhanded. It was just like, oh, okay, I just wanted to make sure that I got everyone's order correct. And he, without blinking at anybody, literally looked at every person and was like, you're going to have the the deer elk with the Worcestershire like sauce and the... And the Repeats it perfectly. Verbatim back to everyone to their face. It was the most epic fucking clapback I have ever seen. And all of the boys, like their, their jaws dropped. Like it was amazing. It was the best thing fucking ever in the middle of fucking nowhere and he clapped back at the whole table and it was wild it was wild i can so get down for, with that for every bad experience i think it was somebody like doing that and then fucking something up which there's, may have not there's even one mind-blowing oh experience. my god yeah. it was amazing yeah, yeah, yeah. it was the most like but i mean that's like that's what the people who who aren't good at it yet but want to try it that's their goal they want to yeah. be that guy it was so sick yeah it was so fucking sick. It's pretty cool when people can do that because it's like clearly a really, really honed skill slash gift that, yeah. you've, that you've kind of figured out. Yeah. And it makes such a difference. But yeah, that's that's a good story. It was amazing. All right, get started. Don't even get me started. I wish I could <laughs> see the words. Ooh, don't even get me started. On why paper receipts still exist. Oh, man. You ever just like go somewhere? Like I I worked in retail. I worked at a tanning salon. I worked at a bar. Like I worked in places where you quote, keep receipts, right? And you have somebody sign it. Not just like I got receipts, but like literal receipts. They all <laughs> get thrown out. Like what the hell? Well, Why are we signing millions of tiny little pieces of paper? I got one counter argument. Why? One counter argument. What? bartenders we always kept a, a cup of receipts just because if the if we were entering like a bill into the pos and we couldn't read the handwriting or maybe the bill was lost or something mm-hmm. we always had a backup receipt in the cup mm-hmm. so i think that was like the only reason why anyone should have a, a a receipt a paper receipt but why can't we do this all electronically at this point i don't know some bars aren't there yet it's not just bars. It's literally everywhere. What about CVS? Yeah, it's literally everywhere. Why can't we do this all electronically? At CVS this point? is killing trees like so rapidly. Yes, they, they are. They are single-handedly killing all the world's trees. It's irresponsible. I agree. I what just, about what about when people are like, here's your change, and they give you the receipt, and then they just drop all the change <laughs> on top of it, so you're just like, now I hate everything in my hand. I literally like don't use cash for anything. I haven't had that happen to me in like seven years. Oh, you don't? Oh, I use cash. I don't like to be traced. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't use cash. Okay, but even and for I cards, don't, you get like, receipts. Why, why do we have paper receipts? Why can't we do this all electronically? You know what my favorite thing is? What? Is when I'm advanced and cerebral and millennial enough to use Apple Pay, I'll still get handed a paper receipt. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Why? I don't know, man. I don't know. You basically just took this this new system we've developed. And you've thrown it on its ass. And you doo-dooed and on it. Doo-dooed on it with a receipt. I literally just saved the tree. Here, beep. But why do I need oh, a paper here. receipt if I have an electronic receipt? I don't know, man. It's so dumb. Just in case the world ends and you want to like make sure that your boss gives you the money that he owes you for going to get him a fucking salad? Uh-uh. I, I wish I could tell receipt. you the last time I actually kept a receipt and then used it to return something. 99% of the times that I've returned something... It's either an Amazon return where I'm like, okay, I'll ship it back. You have all the you have all the data in yeah. your system, or it's like Guitar Center where I have like an account with them and I need to re- exchange yeah. or return something, and they're like, okay, look up your account. Oh, it's here. Bam. I'm not gonna keep a fucking piece of paper ever. Stupid. I just don't know why it still exists. 
I'm sure there's plenty of logical reasons, but for me personally, I feel like it's a little silly. It just doesn't make sense. It's it's so stupid. Let me know in the comment. Comments. Mm -hmm. Your below. turn. Your turn, boy. Hello. Yeah. Sorry. I'm spaced out. Don't even. Oh, I don't want to do this one. Okay. That one's not that good. Don't even get me started on people who just go ahead and pet dogs or gate without Ooh. asking or gauging the dog's interest. I can't even tell you how many times at the dog park. And there are people, mind you, these aren't just these aren't just bystanders. These aren't just regular civilians. These are fucking people who are They're there dog people. with a group of dogs and they are paid to watch dogs that don't know how to be around other people's dogs. They don't know etiquette with animals. They just there's this one fucking lady, dude. And I'm telling you, like, Marbles must think this woman is the wicked witch of the West because the way she comes at Marbles regularly like not once like a bunch of times she sticks her hands out like the grinch like and then walks towards him reaching downward while making these high-pitched noises about how cute he is and he's losing his and shit he's how scared he is her. he's barking he's backing up he's digging his feet in his hair is standing his up. hair is standing up he's barking barking oh it's okay, dude. dude you're literally paid to be good with dogs and you're doing that like, I've seen children who have better dog manners because they were taught how to act with dogs. Like, I don't understand how people... Or any animal. Adults, animals, really. Yes. But dogs is the main focus. I don't get how adults don't teach their kids not like not to do that to dogs or, or animals. You, like, you gauge the, the animal's interest. You maybe sit next to them. You let them sniff you. You know, there's ways to do it that are, like, comfortable for everybody. I don't get how, like, parents aren't able to teach their kids that because there are kids that just run at animals like crazy. And that always causes for a bad situation. But not only that, adults themselves don't know how to interact with pets. Well, I like, mean. Like, they're just, oh, hey, boochie, boochie. Like, dude, what? Are you kidding me? That's not a fucking toy. Like, regardless of whether or not that dog's going to, like, bite or snap back, that's, the dog hates it. Do you care? Don't even <laughs> fucking get me started, dude. <laughs> What if a fucking Bigfoot, 40-foot giant came up to you and just started touching your head really fucking violently? You'd freak the fuck out. Yeah, you would, like, you would run away terrified for your fucking life. That's what these dogs are doing, dude. Hello, get a clue. Well, you, you also see, like, occasionally in the news, you'll God. see people that are, like, doing things to animals that are just, like, mind-blowing. It's like, why are you doing that? Like, oh, uh, uh, a man gets fucking, you know, run over by a, a bull or something because he's just out there poking it and teasing it and fucking touching it. You deserve to do. You know? Plus, or people who go into those like safari parks and get out of yes. their cars. No, so I've been in those like where you can drive your own car through the safari or whatever and there's a lot of rules. Like don't feed the animals, period. Don't open your window. Don't try and give them food because they like it. They want your food. They, they, and then they're going to try to get more of it. Yeah. And so like no matter what the signs say, no matter what all of the things that you like, you actually sign a piece of paper that's like, I'm not going to be a dick. You see the cars in front of you, people like rolling their windows down, giving French fries, like all those videos online of, of people with a, like a giraffe sticking their head through the window. That's because people have conditioned them. They break the rules. They go in there. They don't care because they think it's fucking funny it's so fucked people are the fucking worst man people are the worst things to happen to animals but then but then so the animals like lions and all that shit like it's crazy there's a bunch of them in canada too where you can just like drive through there and they have like actual lions yeah. they're like don't, don't fuck around they roll down their window they feed them and then the animal gets pissed off if you you know roll up your window and take the food away from them so they start destroying your car like they rip off your antenna there's been your videos mirrors. of people dying like that like yeah. one woman got like ripped away by a, That's a lion terrifying. well she actually did, she didn't die i think she just got really fucked up but still like but then those people have the audacity to try and like sue that place or be like you need to to pay my car got ruined it's like you were feeding an animal what are you doing? But it's those types of people that don't really ha have the wherewithal to grasp that an animal is its own being. They're just like, they're and it's just giving like you entertainment for me and so, toys. It's giving you so many clues about how I don't want you to touch me or how I want your food or like that kind of stuff that people just refuse to acknowledge. Yeah. It like breaks my heart sometimes when Marbles is like forced to be the dick 
And like Marbles, yeah, he's a chihuahua. He's naturally aggressive. He's protective. All that. Sure. He's not, he's not aggressive. Hold on. Hold on. He's, he's you know, he's protective. And he can he can snap because he's a chihuahua. And if you like come at him, whatever. Like He gives people and other animals it clear breaks boundaries. My, it breaks my heart sometimes to see like it's like when it's like when people mistreat the fuck out of pit bulls and then the pit bulls nasty and attacks things it's like well now you've put this dog in this horrible position and this is obviously a much smaller extent when i'm talking about marbles Mm -hmm. but like you put this dog in a position to where you're mistreating it and so it's like giving you these signs that aren't like pretty it's barking right it's like not a happy scene but you've created the situation to where now you can just be like oh that dog's aggressive Mm -hmm. oh that dog's barking that's a nasty little chihuahua no motherfucker you came at this dog the wrong way you didn't learn basic animal etiquette you're treating them like a like a toy rather than an actual living being Because you want to think they're cute and come at them with all sorts of weird body language that your parents never taught you were wrong. Fuck that. Fuck that. I just don't get like when people want to touch an animal, regardless of whether it's a pet, whether you see it outside, like animals always give you clear signals about whether or not they'd like to be touched or that kind of thing. And if it's a person's person's dog, right? And you can talk to them and you can be like, do you think it'd be all right if I try and pet him? Like maybe you're having a conversation with them. Mm. Sure. Like I don't understand who taught these people to never like get down or like have the animals smell you first. You know, if, if they have no problem, maybe don't just go in for the head and like give them one of these, like a nice chest scratch, like something non-threatening. It's like people just never learn how to interact with an no, animal. No, they're, they're little pets. They're little chihuahuas. They don't have feelings. They don't understand. They're, yeah. they're just here to be pet by me. Well, because if someone with any wherewithal walks up to marbles and when they start getting too close to him he does he might growl his hair might stand up he might start walking away or like you know trying not to be in that situation if the person's getting too close he might bark at them yeah and then it's never a person that's like when they see that they're like do you think i could pet him because i'd be like well probably not he's he's sort of giving you all the signals like please don't touch me you know yeah. like nothing personal i just don't know you and you're a giant and you're already coming at me it's the people that see all of that ignore and it still and still it. try and touch yeah. him don't say anything to me and aren't interacting with him whatsoever they just want to touch him like he doesn't want to be touched he's telling you he doesn't want to be touched nothing personal fam just he doesn't want to be touched Jesus. neither do i when i'm out in the world you know yeah it's so fucking depressing that people can't grasp that dude imagine just the person walking up to you and going like this and then if you're like whoa man hey maybe don't touch me and they're just like self-defense so pretty yeah, dude, i'll like lose my speak mind the same language yeah don't touch me even if we didn't speak the same language even yeah. if you spoke french and i spoke english and you came up and touched yeah, and me it's like, a universal like don't suck the blah, don't touch me blah. yeah oof oof Oh, man. Do you want to do one more each? Sure. All right. <laughs> All right. Don't even get me started on how Dr. Phil is allowed to be that sexy. Oh, da 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 Where do I start with this? He's got a big... Go, go on. <laughs> He's got a big chunk, <laughs> trunk full of a lot of junk. Oh. He's wearing that dashing suit every day oh his feet are like size 20 oh his head is as shiny as the top of the chrysler building wow that was an annie reference oh okay right i yeah. don't know anyway, it was um <laughs> he sits on that high as fuck chair looking down on me dad oh. <laughs> he's fixing people's lives for no financial gain only because of the good of his heart <laughs> He wears rings the size of my car on his thick sausage fingers. His mustache just will not quit. And, uh, yeah, I just dream about him. I don't know. I don't I don't think he should be allowed to be that sexy. I yeah, he little, married. I think it's But how unfair. married is he? Yeah, I don't, think that's, I don't think that's fair to the rest of us that don't have thick daddy Dr. Phil's to look at every day. How is that allowed? Go off. How is that allowed? Oh, and I'm supposed to keep my hands to myself? Oh, what? He's looking so sexy. Oh, my God. We just talked about this. Oh, we didn't account for the scenario where you run into Dr. Phil and you lose control of your body. Oh, my God. I want a different one. We need a good one to end. I'm just thinking about that mustache now. Mm. 
Okay. If you couldn't tell, Jenna wrote that card. So some of these are why we poop and pee into fresh water, uh, people who demand to have week-long birthday celebrations, why eBay still exists, hmm. why room service prices are so expensive. All really good to rant about. But I her. think we should rant about why being ticklish serves for no survival advantage <laughs> and is stupid. <laughs> okay. Being ticklish is stupid. Why are we ticklish? Because if I didn't gazelle, Google this, I could probably end this by just Googling it, but I want to. It's stupid. What if? Yeah. I have nothing. I don't know why humans are ticklish. Why are we ticklish? Aren't animals ticklish? I don't know. Maybe it's a way of touching that's intimate, but not quite like intimate, intimate, like sex stuff. But like also not threatening like danger. So it's like a middle ground of like I playing. feel like if you're getting tickled hard enough, it's very <laughs> threatening. Yeah. Have you ever been a tickle attack? That's scary. <laughs> oh, God. No, no, no. Not on the podcast. Not on the podcast. Ticklish. My eyes tickling. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. He's so ticklish right under his chin. I hate chin. it. I hate it. I hate it. It's But it's... No, Aside for those, uh, the documentary who were tickled, where they like tickle, you know, oh, each other for money on, on camera and shit. Aside from that, <laughs> there's no, there's no purpose that it serves for those that guys. Was it like was like a, a tickling career. fetish. To like, those guys, it was a career, <laughs> but to us, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> it serves, no, it serves nothing. It's stupid. Tickling is stupid. But like, if, from an evolutionary standpoint, like, why would you develop being tickled, like, like ticklish? I wish, dude, I could just raise my arms up to the sky and everyone could just do that underneath my arms and I wouldn't feel anything and I would just be able to. All right, let me just because I'm lazy and I felt like just you know complaining about it before I actually figured mm -hmm. out. Let me just Google it really quick. Why are we ticklish? I'm interested in this. I don't. I don't have any idea why we'd be ticklish. We can't tickle ourselves. This is because your brain <laughs> takes your movement and intention into account <laughs> when responding to the sensation. And this reduces the ticklish nature we know of that. the touch. No one can tickle themselves. You're a crazy person. Curious here. kids. Why are we ticklish? Okay. There are different kinds of tickles. Okay, clickbait. Why don't you tell me why the fuck we're ticklish? I'm bored. What scientists used to think. About 150 years ago, a famous scientist named Charles Darwin thought tickling was linked oh, to our guy. sense of humor. <laughs> he thought this because we laugh when we tickle, when, when tickled, just as when we laugh when we find something funny. Scientists found this was wrong because when we find something funny, we laugh as a sign of enjoyment. But lots of people don't enjoy being tickled, which is why when they laugh and smile, they can't help it. Some scientists think that it could be when we cry from cutting onions. Okay, like that type, that, that type, that type of, of crying response. doesn't mean that you're sad. Other people have thought the tickling was a way to build a relationship between other people. What the such fuck? Such as brothers and sisters or a parent with their child. Scientists have found that this isn't right either, which is why, and, and we can be tickled by robots. Wow, this is quite the article. Oh, <laughs> oh, also robots can fucking tickle you, bitch. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. What we think could be the cause. We can't tickle ourselves. This is because your brain, okay, blah, blah, blah. Your brain has to deal with a lot of information coming in all the time. When that touches from another person or thing, this is important to know. It could be a spider crawling on you. Okay, this, but why? What that's the not fuck? like having a tickle response isn't going to help you like evade that spider. This, this hasn't given me any information that I found helpful. Okay, this says, why, from the Los Angeles Times, why are we ticklish? Scientists who tickled rats <laughs> offer an intriguing answer. So, hey, honey, how was your day? So that was pretty good. Rats, rats apparently can be tickled because scientists did it. Because they tested on rats, right? Those poor rats. Poor rats. I personally think it's like, it's that like inter, intermediate stage between like pleasure and like, and like fight or flight. Like it's tickling. It's like somewhere in the middle that maybe, like, I think, I don't know, man. So to give you the gist of this, it says tickling might be a trick of the brain to make animals or humans respectively interact and play with each other. I still don't think it makes sense. Like from a, from an evolutionary standpoint, the fact that you, you, had, that we you were, couldn't really find even like one clear answer. We were given the ability to be ticklish to encourage us to play with each other. Dude, if someone tickles I don't me, need... I don't want to be with them. 
I don't want to be their friend. I don't want to be around them. I don't trust them anymore. I think I think when their hands are free, I don't like it. In fact, I've seen tickle fights go so south <laughs> to where <laughs> there's, there's violence. When, there's times when we've been tickling each other and like Julian has such a violent response to getting tickled <laughs> where you've like almost kicked me in the head. Like super Because I like hard. jerk around. I'm like, ah. Yeah, he like really jerks around. Like Ugh. how how did we develop the ability to be ticklish and tickle? Is that going to make anybody closer with anybody? It's stupid. I'm cur- that's one thing I'm curious to see what what you guys are going to best us in the comments. Have Tell us why been, tickling. Have you ever been tickled so bad that you peed? Tickle and pee? No, but I've tickled. I've been tickled so bad that I sweat and become uncomfortable, and it's intimate, and I don't like it. And yeah, like my body jerks around in weird spastic movements. I don't like that. The person tickling me doesn't like that, but they signed up for it. <laughs> All of it's bad. This whole scenario is giving... I'm sweating. You're sweating? I'm sweating. I'm sorry. I just think that... What I, if instead of laughing, it. tickling just made you like like sweat like profusely? Like, That's disgusting. <laughs> just like out of all your glands. <laughs> Sick. On that note, want to go have a tickle fight? No, because I'll get like kicked in the head. You'll break my nose. Okay, you know, that's extreme. Is it? Yes, it's extreme to say, I'll break your nose. Thank you. Don't, oh, he tried not to be ticklish now. Don't, uh, we got to end the podcast before you make me pee <laughs> or sweat. <laughs> well, this concludes. Don't even get me started. Well, if you don't like being tickled, well, if you. <clears throat> tickling, t- getting tickled sucks, but at least you'll be tickled while you're wearing me and these. So don't stop tickling me my knee pit. Thank you guys for watching. Please let us know in the comments how wrong we were on all these things. And we'll see you guys next week for another podcast. Don't tickle each other. It doesn't breed friendship. It breeds enemy ship. (laughs) The bad kind of ship. (laughs) Yeah. Bye.